Hello everyone, once again I welcome you all to MSB lecture series on uh, transfer metal chemistry. Uh, in my previous lecture I was discussing about metal metal multiple bonding. While describing uh, the reason for metal metal multiple bonding, I also showed you how one can use effectively molecular orbital concept to understand the significance of metal metal bond and also to understand the magnitude of the metal metal bond. Let us continue from where I had stopped. Uh, today we shall look into more quadruple bond and quintuple bonding we come across among coordination compounds. I have given here two examples, look into it carefully, one is a chromium complex and another one is also a chromium complex, but ligands are very different and you can see in the first one, you can see orthometallation is there on opposite side and you see weak interaction with uh, uh, this phenyl group carbon atom. So, you are having some sort of interaction here and same thing is true here. So, that means essentially chromium has one ligand that is a very bulky ligand and one should remember if you want to stabilize any metal in its low valent state which is coordinatively unsaturated, only way is you have to do it kinetically. How to do it? You have to go for a very bulky ligand so that it will give umbrella protection surrounding the metal atom so that it does not give scope for other bigger ligands to enter. So, in this context initially this mono ligated chromium compound was made and then this interacts two such mono coordinated chromium species they interact with uh, uh, this ortho substituted carbon here you can see and as a result what happens it appears to be having uh, two coordination with uh, almost linear geometry and in this case what if you carefully count here we have five bonds are there here. And if 5 bonds are there, how to explain that one? Same thing is true in this case also, whereas here nitrogen is there, central pyridine, uh, nitrogen is coordinating, and also nitrogen lone pair is coming here. See, this is the ligand uh, used in case of the first one, and in the second case, we have used this ligand here. And you can see here, first it binds here, and you will be having almost 1 is to 1 metal to ligand ratio, and then since this side is open what happens two such molecules will arrange in such a way that something like this they come and they establish a dimetallic core. So, now we have to explain the origin of 5 bonds in this one. How to do that one? Again we have to go to the same concept that we used earlier to explain multiple bonding like single bond, double bond, triple bond or up to 4 bonds or quadruple bond. Same analogy we should use here. One interesting thing is here in previous case we were just uh, confined to 4 orbitals that is dz square uh, something like forming sigma bond and then we had dxz and dyz forming 2 pi bonds and then we had dxy forming delta bond, 4 orbits we used. So, 4 orbitals means if the capacity is 8 then you can have bond order 4, but if we want to have bond order of 5 uh, in order to see the formation of quintuple bond we need 5 electron on each metal uh, d orbitals that means d5 configuration we have to take in. But in earlier case when we took d5 what happened was 2 electrons were going to uh, delta star, delta star as a result what happens the bond order was reducing from 4 to 3, but in this case what happens since it is using sp hybridization we are left with all the 5 d orbitals for bonding purpose. In square planar complexes we are using d x square minus y square uh, for making metal to ligand bond you just recall valence bond theory where we are using uh, d sp to hybridization that d orbital is d x square minus y square whereas in this case it undergoes sp hybridization to accommodate to two ligands surrounding chromium atom as a result what happens all d orbitals are left unutilized and chromium electronic configuration if you see d4 s2 or d5 s1 and this ligand if you see the top one if it is monoanionic here through ch activation it forms so then it is a monoanionic means oxygen state should be plus 1 and as a result what happens chromium will be left with 5 electrons. So, 5 electrons are there and 5 d orbitals are there. Now that means 
uh, along with dxy, dx square minus y square also participates in delta bond formation. So that means now we have one sigma bond through dz square and two pi bonds are there through dxz and dyz and then we have okay, overlapping of uh, dxy and dx minus y square that leads to two delta bonds. That means 10 electrons are there in the bonding 10 divided by 2 equals 5. So, bond order is 5 this is how you can visualize quintuple principle bonding in these kind of compounds. So, that will become clear when we go to the next one. So, I again just I have shown here how it happens. So, next you can see here yeah uh, th this is a compound another compound here uh, of course here you can see just go back to this one and, and here uh, if the delocalization happens here of course this is anionic you should recall here n uh, 2 are coordinated so n minus this is. So, here almost it is similar to NH2 minus I would say NR2 minus. So, now what happens this is delocalized as a result becomes monionic very similar to couple of ligands I showed you in my earlier class in couple of uh, examples showed you in my earlier lecture you can see now anionic it is. So, chromium or molybdenum they are in plus 1 state. So, D5 electronic configuration and, and how this compound is made I have given the method here. First you take uh, this compound where chromium is in plus 2 state CrCl2 coordinated to 2 neutral ligands such as THF. You take this one and treat this one with lithiated this aromatic group and once you lithiated this one is there the LiCl uh, comes out and you left with one Cl here as a result what happens it forms a dimeric structure having two chloro bridges here. And now this one needs reduction for that one Kc8 potassium or graphite is taken slight excess in THF then it will abstract to chlorides uh, to generate chromium 1 species from chromium 2 and then now chromium 1 species is coordinatively unsaturated it interacts with uh, this carbon here and then it establishes a like a bidentate mode of coordination having this kind of structure and you should remember that here we have 5 electrons are there in the d orbit. So, this was reported in 2014 in Dalton transaction. So, another compound is there I will give you the preparation of this compound also before I proceed to show the MO diagram to confirm the presence of 5 bonds. So, in this one to take it is already you know quadruply bonded compound very similar to rhenium uh, uh, dimer Re2 Cl A2 minus. So, just look into this one. So, this is a potassium salt you know, because tetra anionic. So, what one should do is you add a ligand that ligand I will show you what it is and then you can make a compound of this type here I will show you what is A and then again you use the reduction process using potassium or graphite that leads to the formation of a quintuply bonded compound like this. So, you may be wondering what is A. So, A is this one here lithiated this bulky aromatic compound here this is the lithiated one. And then if you just see here two lithiums here two lithiums are there uh, that means when you are using two equivalent one lithium is coming out as LiCl. So, you can see the missing of uh, one chlorine here and then another one okay, another one will remain here coordinated to lone pairs on chlorine here. And then of course, once when you reduce with Kc8 everything is gone and you simply ended up with a molybdenum plus 1 a compound having this monoanionic ligands bridging in this fashion. I am sure it is clear uh, about preparative methods. So, this came in 2009 in uh, JOX. So, now just see here uh, molybdenum is plus 1 state D5 system to form this complex as I mentioned earlier molybdenum has not used uh, d x minus y square otherwise it would have used if it had square pair geometry. So, now this is also available along with the d x y you know oriented in this fashion something like this one is like this and another one is at 45 degrees both of them can only overlap in this fashion when they stacked in along z axis you can see here 5 are there now uh, just see I have added d x minus y square also for this bonding scheme here. We have total 5 electrons uh, whether you take chromium or molybdenum. First two establish 
a sigma bond by utilizing 2 electrons and now pi bond we are using these 2, these 2, 4 electrons so 2 pi bonds are there and now we are using now 2 electrons here one each from dxy and dxy square from both the metal centers and then we establish a 2 delta bond. So then the bond order is 5. So this is how you can explain quintuple bonding among coordination compounds having d5 electronic configuration with dx square minus y square available for metal metal bonding. Now let us go to another interesting compound here. If you recall uh, my previous lecture where I classified metal metal bonding compounds into covalent bonding, dative bonding and symmetric uh, metal metal bonding. So now let us look into dative bond scheme. So when a metal with at least 2 d electrons and a moderately high electron count is adjacent to a metal that is coordinatively unsaturated and electron deficient. In that case what happens both of them can have some sort of Lewis acid base interaction. The one metal that is electron rich can give a pair of electron to the one which is electron deficient provided it has empty orbits of suitable symmetry to take those electrons. In that case what happens you can establish a dative metal metal bond or you can call it as a adduct between two metal centers. So I have given one ideal example here and it is very interesting to analyze this one and there are several ways one can analyze this compound. This is a phosphide ligand here you can see Pr2 minus and it is also Pr2 minus and we have 3 carbonyl groups all together and if you just look into this one well of course it, this can be plus 2 state nickel can be plus 2 state provided uh, it anionic establishes a bond with nickel in that case what happens this will be plus 2 state that means D8 system D8 plus 4 12 and plus 14. So this becomes a 14 electron species on the other hand this one is nickel 0 now Pr2 acting as a neutral ligand towards this nickel. So D10 plus 8 it is 18 electron system that means it is very similar to NiCO4 or NiPPH3 4 times. Now so this is 18 and this is 14. So this electrons can go here so that it becomes a 16 electron species and to an extent electron deficiency can be removed here. So you can see how dative bond is directed from this coordinatively saturated and electronically rich nickel to this 14 electron species. Okay, that means uh, what are the other alternates? For example, we can have phosphide one each on these two metals. In that case what happens both of them will be nickel plus one state. If they are in nickel plus 1 state what happens the D9 system they become both of them become D9 system and then we have uh, anionic on both sides so 2 electrons are coming here and bridging one neutral also 2 electrons are coming whereas in this case one carbon monoxide is there and of course there is one metal metal bond you can think of D9 system so 16 electrons will be there for this one and then here in plus 1 state and then you have 4 electrons this will be 18 electron. But here if it is 16 many uh, D8 systems are stable with uh, uh, 16 electron species you cannot think of a dative bond. So since it is an example that is proved through experiments and also X-ray structure so this kind of analysis is incorrect. So nickel plus 1 is not correct instead uh, what I said earlier so this is in 0 state and this is in plus 2 state is the correct analysis and nickel with 18 electron is donating 2 electrons to this one. So let us analyze for better understanding so now you can see here 2 options so now I have shown both the terms here so I have shown here nickel this is binding to 4 neutral ligands with 18 electrons with D10 system that is 0 and now this is going this way that means now this is in nickel plus 2 because we here we are talking about phosphide anionic. So this is a covalent bond and this is a coordinate bond. Now this is in nickel plus 2 and 16 electron species and now this will be nickel 0. So this also becomes 10 plus 16 electron species both are 16 electron species in that case what happens none of them can give electrons to this. On the other hand other alternative is as I mentioned nickel 1, nickel 1 can be there again we overruled from my previous discussion and argument and then what would happen here 17 and 18 and now it is 16 and 18. But when we look into the X-ray data what it shows is nickel 2 NiCO 170 picometer 
and Ni2 phosphorus 216 picometer. Now let us look into the bond parameter for this one nickel 0 NiCO 178 picometer. Uh, that means it is longer. Why it is longer? Because it is taking some back bonding is there because it is electron rich. When the back bonding is more to CO, what would happen NiCO bond shrinks and CO bond uh, distance increases. So here it is electron deficient, it is not readily donate electrons to pi star of CO as a result what happens? NiC bond is little longer as a result CO bond still has triple bond character so it is slightly shorter. So that means this proves that this is in plus 2 state and this is in 0 valent state. And again that is also reflected from NIP 224 picometer this is a coordinate bond whereas here we have a covalent bond because it is an anionic P minus. So 216 this is shorter always covalent bonds are shorter compared to coordinate bond. So this is another proof to say that this has a dative bond with nickel 0 18 electron species and nickel 2 14 electron species. So this proves beyond any doubt that there is a dative bond between two nickels and this zero valent nickel is donating a pair of electrons to this one to overcome its electron deficiency. This is how one should analyze carefully by looking into all parameters and NINI distance distances 241 picometer or 2.41 angstrom units. So now let us come to the last one I did mention about uh, uh, symmetry metal metal bonding. So what would happen here is weak metal metal interactions observed due to the molecular orbital symmetry interactions of filled and empty metal metal bonding orbitals and or anti bonding orbitals observed in D8 system and is very rare. D8 system should not have any metal metal bonding due to the zero bond energy as both bonding and anti bonding orbitals are completely filled. That means you can see here for example if you recall MO diagram just I am writing here 2 electron sigma, 2 pi here and 2 delta and then again delta is filled and pi is filled and then sigma is filled. So this is sigma 2 pi and then delta, delta star, pi star, 2 pi star and sigma star. So all 10 electrons are there. So bond order is 0. So that means you do not expect any metal metal bonding in a square planar complex having D8 system. But HP gray and others observed in a few bi or polymetallic complexes having D8 electronic configuration and showed the presence of weak metal metal interactions both in solution and in solid state. That means if you observe in solution uh, these molecules retaining weak interactions and stacking along the axial position probably there is bonding that has to be uh, explained. So one such complex of iridium with isocyanate showed weak metal metal interactions and that gave enough proof to go further. You can see here okay, this iridium complex here iridium plus compound D8 system having neutral isocyanate ligands are stacked up in this fashion having unusually shorter iridium iridium bond. Uh, despite war rule we war rule any metal metal bonding as bond order comes to 0. Then how to explain this one? So Gray proposed in 1974 that these weak metal metal interactions were caused by a molecular orbital symmetry interaction between the filled sigma metal metal bonding and sigma star anti bonding orbitals with the empty PZ sigma and sigma star orbitals. You should remember when we think of valence bond theory to explain square planar complex geometries we are using DSP2 that means D orbital is dx minus y square and then we are using S orbital along with Px and Py orbitals and Pz orbital is left unutilized in a square planar complex along with 4 other orbitals. But in D8 what happens everything is filled that means now the interaction between Dz square where we have sigma and sigma star filled and unfilled they interact with empty sigma and sigma star of Pz orbitals. That means take Pz orbitals from two metal centers and try to establish a molecular orbital sigma Pz and sigma star Pz 
and then they are empty and whereas this is filled that means there is some interaction happens between these two pair of uh, molecular orbitals. The filled d z square bonding and antibonding orbitals with empty p z due to this kind of interactions the empty orbitals are pushed up in energy and the filled orbitals push it down in energy by this symmetry interaction. So, due to this kind of arrangement this generates a weak metal metal bond strong enough to allow these complexes to form mm bonds and retain them even in solution. So, this was observed in many complexes of iridium and even palladium and platinum compounds with the D8 electronic configuration probably if you look into literature and work by Gray. Uh, you will come across more examples. With this I am completing the discussion on metal metal multiple bonding. So, once this is done you should remember one thing when we predict metal metal bonding in these cases where you can have single bond, double bond, triple bond, quadruple bond or to quintuple bonding the concept usually is very different compared to what we come across in predicting metal metal bondings while using 18 electron rule. Sometime they may be in some cases it does not apply. Do not try to mix up they are different entities and different type of compounds we come across these things. Maybe there may be some examples where we can see both uh, merging and to give a correct explanation about 18 electron rule. Nevertheless they are entities but uh, beautiful concepts and without any problem one can explain using simple molecular orbital concept. What one should remember is again in case of square planar complexes we have 4 d orbitals are there d z square, d x y, d x z and d y z and d x z and d y z generate 2 pi bonds, d z square generates 1 sigma bond and because of their orientation d x y will overlap only like this only like this and they generate delta bonding and then we have 8 electrons in the bonding and if bond order is nothing but number of electrons present in bonding orbitals minus number of electrons present in anti bonding divided by 2. So, that gives the bond magnitude of 4 uh, to have 4 bonds or quadruple bond though a square planar metal complex should have d4 electronic configuration or they should have 4 electrons in their d orbitals. And if we have unutilized d x minus y square also with lower symmetry or sp hybridization for example, in that case what happens d x square minus y square is also made available for bonding in that case all 5 d orbitals are available for bonding you can imagine or you can explain uh, the quintuple bonding. There may be more examples of course, if you are more interested you can always go to literature and look into more examples. In my next lecture I shall discuss about the preparation of some of the important coordination compounds and organometallic compounds keeping their utility in further reactions and then making ideal compounds for homogeneous catalysis. Until then have an excellent time reading chemistry.